fact, in this was the only session that we had to go up and down and here and here, left, right. But you were the right person to do that left, right. So great. And then we had uh, Dr. Mukhtar, the former chairman of HSC with us, and we had vice chancellors. So this was really a very lively, interactive, and we, we learned a lot. Uh, and uh, Professor Kim, who is already uh, witnessing us, uh, uh, he been feeling happy to, to see that the series was having almost many of the aspects that we could cover. And now, uh, with the permission of Professor Kim, we are bringing uh, in this concluding session 15 minutes ahead of time. So that in Korea, it's now in evening, uh, he could go for dinner right in time. So, Professor Kim, we are going to start the concluding ceremony that will take uh, maybe maximum 30 minutes and then uh, we all can go and take rest. Uh, I may not be saying that uh, uh, I didn't expect that I would stand that long today, but luckily I survived. Uh, so, let's do that. Professor Kim, we are going to start the concluding ceremony with your permission and say out to you to just, just witness one thing that this souvenir will be received by someone and later on uh, delivered to his office uh, because he is virtual, but you can see uh, who he has uh, believed that he will not take to his home, but back to your home. Uh, that is, you have to choose who should receive your shield on your behalf. So that's what we are going to do. Uh, next sir. Yes, sir. Zia. David. Okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, so, Professor Kim, you are listening to us. Shall we go ahead? Professor Kim, from Newton. With the permission of you. Yeah. Kim. Yeah, you can go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, it was uh, again a very hectic and very uh, productive day for us, for Pakistan Academy of Sciences. And with this uh, activity, we feel really happy that. Uh, uh, we come to the stage. So what I'm going to do is that, uh, first of all, uh, I, uh, I have a little bit of change presentation. So I give you some overview again uh, what we were doing in the last four webinars. Then I will be asking Professor Kim to say his concluding remarks for at least this series of sessions that we had till this June, because NASA will have its new year uh, for financial year starting, we will have a new council of ASA, so we are waiting for that. So we, what we are going to do is that I will show you few few things that we, we, we did, and then I will ask uh, Professor Kim to say a few words. Finally, uh, the chief guest will be on giving her message, the federal secretary for higher education, education and training. And then we will have certificates for all of those people who are present here, plus souvenirs for those uh, who presented today. So this is uh, something uh, that uh, we are going to do. COVID-19 higher education challenges, you heard a lot. But I'm just trying to summarize all this. That uh, internationally, we, when we work with the UN agencies, UNESCO, uh, there is a biotoxin uh, weapon convention, WTO, WDC, uh, uh, where we, we discussed this issue. Earlier it was the biological labs that we were worried that maybe they designed something. Still there is a debate on COVID. And that may escape the lab mistakenly, unknowingly, and may create a habit. But now, there is another aspect of it, which is the misuse of social media and IT that you don't need to deploy a bioweapon, you just have some rumors and the, the everybody will be a bioweapon for you, will move around, will not vaccinate, will do the job of that bioweapon without deploying bioweapon. So that is what we need as a social uh, uh, responsibility of the academy specifically and the academia in general, that we have to address all those issues uh, that we, we have to Address. For example, we talk about anti-vaccination movement, uh, measles against measles, we knew it, uh, the anti-vaccination 30% uh, uh, 2016 because of this movement. Uh, in Pakistan, we had also witnessed uh, uh, a movement against polio vaccine and for which we suffered. There was casualties, 
people were against it. Uh, and then, um, uh, of course, as I said, social media, mistrust in government responses, preventing people from treatment. Even, uh, I have no hesitation of saying, some head of the states, like in the US, they said, drink bleach. Oh, it's a small one of the head of the states. It's just a simple fever, don't worry. And now they, those who said those words are repenting. In India, they were saying, have caviurine, you will be cured. Uh, have alcohol, the spirit, you will be cured. And then now for the uh, oxygen uh, supply, they said, have a pressure cooker, have something, and have it your nose, you will be okay. None of some, such things. So who is responsible to have a passive effect of all this? You guys, the biologists. They have to have an influence, they have to have a counter narrative so that people rely on you. That's why we are having these academies functions that we sensitize you, go back home, run your social media circle and don't spread news unless it is verified. The last time it was said that those who will have vaccine will die within two years, for example. Come on man, you as a scientist, you should believe what's happening and you should have a counter narrative for that. Another one was just two days back that this vaccine that you are getting, this will spread like a virus is spreading. So you don't need to vaccinate more. Those who are vaccinated, when they come, they will have vaccine for others to inhale. So these are such kind of issues that we saw. And the third thing is the effort that we legitimization of science. Science, you cannot do that, otherwise if you de-legitimize science, if you don't have a background, how will you do all this? So there is that we, we, we need to really address uh, these issues. Then how to address these issues? The recommendation from Pakistan Academy of Sciences includes that with nature sciences, you, do, you have to work with the social sciences as Dr. Mubina today was doing it. And she was explaining it, that for social problems, you need social sciences, you need to involve them as to how to address these issues that we are confronted with. Uh, for example, burials issues. Some people are very sensitive religiously. When it was the Ebola crisis in Africa, there was a lot of issues how to bury their uh, dead bodies. There was, uh, you know, some people were putting it on the trees so that, uh, you know, so those, those, those issues that social scientists have to come with, uh, with solutions to address such issues then the problem of food habit, obesity, antimicrobial resistance, so on, Antibi overuse of antibiotics, that is that social scientists need to be involved to, to, to take this on. Environmental issues, etc., etc. So uh, there is that you have to address between faith and fear. Uh, when the, the COVID-19 came uh, in the beginning, uh, the government was even not allowing to real except for a few relatives, the maximum number was 20. And there was a lot of who and black people were not dis uh, disclosing that the patient died because of COVID because they were thinking no one will come to their burial ceremonies. So that is that you need to, scientists need to uh, resolve these issues and to address these issues. So, and now uh, Professor Mukhtar already explained this. I will not talk more about it, but uh, uh, how to to cultivate belonging of the student to the system. We cannot just uh, go, and go, go home and we will teach you and we will have exam with you and all this. We have to understand each other's problem. Believe me, I, I, in this semester I had a student from Sin and he was having issues and I asked him one thing. Just go to Chicago University you know, Vice Chancellor, talk to him your issues and if he endorses that you have those problems, don't worry about the assessment and all this, we will, I will ask him to assess you. And uh, so don't go, but I think he never went to him and there was, so this is what we, you need to have, you need to understand the students basically, Pakistan is different than US and Africa and America and everywhere. We, we, our students live in the border of Afghanistan, our students live in areas where really it's very difficult sometimes they have to go up to the mountain to get signals. So those are the issues that the university need to understand when they talk about all this. Uh, here is the World Bank report, sir. This was just, I think, last week. Uh, 205 universities, only 40 universities are equipped enough to teach online. 
in Pakistan. So this is the reality. And then our students come on road and build buses saying that if you have to online, you have to do it online. So that is that we, we, we really have to, to understand as what to do. But this is the reality. You cannot blame students only. You provide them everything and then ask them that, come on, we can do that. So I, I, I'm not going to talk more about it, but this project which was having 93 million US dollar project, I don't know how much of this went to the universities itself, to the students itself. We, we have to have equity. If some student doesn't have, is, uh, from a humble family, have no laptop with another of him, how can you ask them to mobile for something to show It's possible. So we have to address those issues. Uh, thirdly, we have to in, keep students informed about various communication platforms. It's not only uh, that team, that Microsoft, or only that one. You should have other issues to interact with each other, WhatsApp, Twitter, Facebook, and other uh, platforms that you have to have learning management systems as to how to have, uh, to take all of them on board, and then, you know, uh, even to the parents, even to their friends, try to, to be connected, try to be one body, and then you can really uh, work on it. Thirdly, use uh, peer mentors and student leaders don't discuss student leaders all together. At least I have the experience. My class representative really worked very nice. She was a big girl and she did everything. I said, reach Miss X, Mr. Y, and she was there to respond to me. So take them on board. Those who, who have those skills of leadership in students, take them and they will, you know, multiply the effort that you teachers are doing. So that is what we really have to address. Uh, the co-constructor of knowledge, so that the, the, the students believe in them. Um, I, I asked my group of students, they are very good, they said, you are a very good student, why then you are doing the bad thing on the road and all that? They said, sir, oh, teachers are not the same, teachers are also to be trained. So there is that we, we really need to understand all this. Uh, building communities, students belonging virtually, so we have to give them opportunities to share their experiences and how can they be appropriately supported, how can they be uh, done that, and finally uh, engage parents, family, friends, providing them tools and resources to support their students. Try to reach them, try to, try to take them uh, with you, and then uh, you can really uh, have all that. So I'm just closing it down. What we need to do is that we should demonstrate care and compassion, equity with the student. Please remember, those who are living in big cities like Islamabad, Lahore, it is different. The ground reality is Pakistan is different. Islamabad is not Pakistan, but Pakistan is something else. Beyond zero point, there is another Islamabad. And please reach to that Islamabad too. And understand their problems too. See, only then you can really uh, be making a Pakistan. Uh, that how can you do that? So, and the final issue that I'm going to talk to you is, the, this is the, the, the color shows the percent of the people who are vaccinated. In the morning I said about herd immunity, you cannot reach herd immunity unless you uh, at least vaccinate 70% of the population of the world. And Pakistan, if you look at the color, we are less than 5% of the population that are vaccinated twice are complete dose. So if we don't vaccinate, and there are only few countries that have 70 percent the dark color, there is not enough Israel and New Zealand and some other countries. So we have to address this issue of, uh, uh, you know, uh, vaccines. If you look at here, so the one goes, those countries that have so far vaccinated their community for one dose, this is the ratio, percent of the community. Look at China, I think Canada on the top is Rahim Bhutan, and at the bottom, Nepal, India, and of course we are also at, uh, almost at the same place. India that was producing 60% of the global vaccine is a lot. So that is it that you need to understand. 
This is the, the country's percentage that they have so far, and the world average is 20% now, as of today. This is a recent slide. So only 20% of the world population has so far taken the first dose of vaccine. So we still have to work very hard as a community, as a scientist, as a, as a human being. Sometimes I ask this question internationally when I speak outside, say, I, I, sometimes I have a doubt that we have seen Homo sapiens, the way we deal, the colors of the humans, even in the US, the blacks are suffering. They, they, they are having less food, they are having less vaccine, they are having more problems. So this is everywhere in the world. And we should understand that probably we have seen Homo sapiens, let's take them as a unit. Uh, now, this is the ethical responsibility of science with this global threat that we are facing with, that uh, we have to understand all this. I'm not going this to read for you, but uh, the final word would be, good science is absolutely essential to an effective response to the COVID-19 pandemic and other global threat. Without science, you cannot say that we don't need a science. Science will resolve this issue, and you have to really believe in science. This is what another effort that my lab, my group is doing with the uh, uh, this, uh, UK universities, Bradford and other. We are producing some cartoons that will be telling the importance, that will be telling you about vaccines, to send it to the school level so that the children understand how to you have a code of conduct, how to uh, do all this. So this is ready, and this is what we did in this COVID time to respond to the COVID, to the general public about vaccines. I have put only one, one cartoon, there are many that we did with the Metropolitan University of UK, Bradford and others, and from Pakistani side, my group of students, they are working on this. This slide, this is a slide of uh, uh, 20, 2nd June, today is 24, day before yesterday. This is the data of US, how COVID spread from the birthdays, birthday parties. The birthday parties, they, they had uh, spread it by 21% increase as compared to the Dalman. And there was 57% if it was a child birthday. If it was an adult birthday, it was 31%. If it was a child birthday, it spread 57% faster than the normal things. So when you party, please uh, remember that this can happen. And this is uh, published in nature again. So that is that we, we should understand that how to, to go. We close this whole series of webinar with these three, four words. And then I uh, uh, really, really request you, Professor Kim to speak. One, science-led preparedness. Two, act quickly following the science. Three, test, 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 and early test. Four, think globally, act locally. Global threat needs global collaboration. We all as a human have to work together. We are working through the UN system with the agency that they should allow us. WTO regime starts up from uh, copying the vaccine production uh, you know, uh, patents. So we are now asking that one time waiver that all the countries be allowed to use those facilities and to produce vaccines. This is what Africa is doing. And finally, uh, we, we, we should uh, counter misinformation. We scientists should work together. That's our group of all of us. This is what the academy is doing. We have spread all this presentation to YouTube. You will access this today's, maybe within a week time, this poll will be available and I tell you last three webinars if we had a let's say physical presence of 200 the virtual was 700 or close to a thousand and those who watched it on YouTube were more than thousand so that is really this is our aim that we need awareness of, among the population among the general person that we did very nice thanks to the secretary general of the academy Rifat Saar and everybody else who really uh, I was just, you know, a uh, sales person, I did nothing, but uh, always pushing them and sometimes making them annoy us. So I'm, I'm sorry if I, I was too harsh sometimes, but this is what I wanted and this is what happened and I'm very happy. Uh, thanks to all of you, the young sitting here, and the fact and everybody that they did it.
Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks to Asa. Uh, Secretary General will be saying a few words at the end. Uh, I will leave it to him uh, when distributing certificates. But now I am uh, requesting Professor Kim to, to say a few words to close this series of webinars. Professor Yu Hongping, President Asa. Uh, before giving my um, last comment, I'd like to suggest a couple of things. For example, today we, are talk we talked about the food security in the uh, wider term terms. For example, increasing productivity and so on. But right now, there are some segments of the students who are in need of immediate attention. In Korea, for example, up to the K-12 students are given free lunch during the, when they attend the schools. And right now, all the students are out of the schools. So some students from poor families, they were deprived, deprived of uh, the free lunch at the school. So what the Korean government does is that instead of uh, meals at the school, they, the government gives them a, a food voucher so that they can buy some food items in the convenience stores or in the supermarket or even they can go to the restaurants to buy food so that at least they can have one or two meals or, or appropriate meals every day. And the other thing is Korea now is trying to reopen the campuses in coming September. And uh, universities are preparing for the opening of the campus. And uh, there are many, many, many things they can do. But one thing is that instead of the PCR test, which takes a long time and also it's expensive, they can they will use very uh, prompt and time, very fast, uh, self diagnosis kits to the students. The university can manage all those uh, tests at the, on, the, on the campus. So when the students coming in in the university, they can get that kind of test before entering the classrooms. And that, that's a smaller suggestion. Uh, uh, I, I just would like to thank the Pakistan Academy of Science, especially the President Professor Khan and also the pre Professor Shinari for holding these four webinars so splendidly and successfully. I am looking forward to receiving your recommendations and also the other materials, proceedings, etc., so that we can send them back to the IAP for reporting our activities. Thank you very much and well done. Congratulations for the job well done. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Kim, for your recommendations and suggestions. So, next, uh, there is the recording message uh, by Secretary of Education. Yes, Baba Amit Khan.